Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KidBadger.com. I am up here in New Hampshire at Q with me. With me. <laughs> Ethan Lassard. What is your official title? Uh, King Engineer? No, um, I think it's just Vice President of Engineering. I don't know. Engineering of some sort. Engineering for Q yeah. of some sort. Yes, in quotes. But, um, we're here today to basically go over some of the new stuff that you guys kind of have coming down the pipe, right? Correct. Uh, what do we, where do we want to start? Uh, we can start with the 338 or 8.6 millimeter silencers. All right. Okay. We will do that. When designing our 338 silencers, we had a couple of things that we wanted to achieve in a little bit different manner than with the titanium silencers we currently have. Um, was that, now that I cut you off, was that directed towards the end goal of like the weapon, the caliber, the application, as far as what created different design requirements? Um, yeah, every time we design something, it's what can we do better based on the knowledge we've gained from the previous product. Okay. So, uh, the titanium silencers, the Trash Panda, the Thunder Chicken, they're very good silencers. They've been wildly popular. Um, but there are some drawbacks to using titanium. It's expensive. Um, it's not very dense, so it, you can make very light products out of it. But in a product where you're trying to gain as much internal volume as possible, moving to a more dense material, we're able to get more volume inside the silencer and at this point for a very similar weight. So if you add titanium that was that thick, you can go to stainless that's that thick, and now you have more on that the internal yeah. dimension gets bigger. As long as we stay with the same outside size, we can use less volume of material to achieve the same strength. Which gives more internal volume. Correct. Okay. Which for the silencer is really what we're looking for, is to enclose as much volume as possible. All right. Um, Another advantage of moving to a stainless steel is the lack of sparking. So we have some customers who have a visual signature requirement, and with the titanium silencers, as they heat up and erode, they sparkle a little bit. They look a little bit like sparklers. Um, okay. So it's not that big of a deal for... Recreational shooters. Recreational shooters, yeah. hunting, those sorts of things. I mean, if you have animals that are spooked and you have more of them that you need to shoot mm -hmm. it becomes an issue it becomes an issue so the stainless eliminates the sparking um, the other thing we needed to do is accommodate much bigger muzzle threads whereas the thunder chicken and trash panda cherry bombs the biggest thread we can really go is 5 8 24 just because the cherry bombs are so much smaller that's how we're able to make them so much lighter so okay with the 8.6 or 3.38 projectiles, we start seeing threads 3 quarter 24, 18 by 1, very, very big threads. Because of the dimensions of the barrel you're starting with yes. on all that? Yes. Yeah. You all need right. to maintain a wall thickness between the bore and the minor diameter of the thread. You should maintain a wall thickness. Right. If you want to achieve the goal of <laughs> durability, yes, those are the things you need uh -huh. to do. So the muzzle devices had to get bigger. So that's why we see these this guy right here. bigger. And so this is made obvious, I'm assuming. This right here is for flat, so you can put this guy on. Yeah, the, the wrench flats are there just because what we try to do with all of our products is use the least amount of material as possible. So I have some real estate in between the thread and the taper that I can use for wrench flats. It saves material both for mass, for cost, it's um, and so on this one, tapers before threads. So yep. this entire surface is the taper surface, or is it this front ledge more no. than this back? So if you look at it, this versus this. So this one that's closest to the wrench flats uh -huh. is the actual ceiling taper. Oh, okay. The taper in front is just to help align it when you're installing it. Okay. Like so that when could you're be an putting inch shorter, and this is it. So. Yep. Basically, when we're coming here, yep. that's going to help just continue to align it until we get Correct. to where we start grabbing. Correct. Right. And this was just one of the original prototypes. I don't know if we're going to sell the 
non-muzzle device yeah. QD adapter. Um, it's just the quickest, easiest, simplest thing to start testing with. Gotcha. So you can start putting cans on and off. Okay. Yeah. And this guy down here. This is a three-prong flash hider. Um, For 338-8.6. Correct. This one happens to be threaded 5H24 just so we could do some comparative testing on some of our 300 blackout guns. Okay. Um, but this is big enough in diameter to go all the way up to 18 by one and a half, which has been more or less adopted as the standard muzzle thread, at least in the U.S. military for okay, 338 for, guns. For that caliber? Yeah. Gotcha. Well, 338 Norma, 338 Lapua. Gotcha. They're all pretty much 18 by 1.5. And, and half, yeah. this interface is here. Correct. Because this is a stainless steel like blast chamber, is it as important with respect to erosion and stuff to basically make a giant cherry bomb for this? Um, like I know the purpose of the cherry bomb largely um, is like it's an extra blast baffle and yeah I mean really it's it's main it up. its main purpose is to provide recoil reduction when the silencer is not, not on, on it. It, because the the fix is a very light gun yeah so we had to spend some time to get that recoil reduction just so it's not terrible to shoot okay it's a six pound 308 gun with a real small Beat butt pad. Yeah, it gets especially old. before you guys had the yeah the big butt pad. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Okay. Uh, so historically, we've been pretty adverse to putting wipes in the silencers just because they have such a negative impact on dispersion accuracy. Okay. At the, at you, d you get away from consistency when you do correct. that, right? It, it's a lot harder to shoot very small groups as soon as you introduce something the bullet has to touch. Yeah. Um, but we do have customers that really, really want them, so we've looked at doing this. Uh, we have a fairly simple system. I saw that, and I was going to ask back, because I'm like, what is going on with this thing? Yeah, so we, you again, use a taper before the thread. There's a female taper inside the front end cap. The white is installed. It compresses the wipe and then engages the taper with a standard, I think that's 5 8 thread, uh, 5 8 socket. Just socket? Yep. Okay. So you can get to it from the outside. Um, it does make it considerably quieter. It does make it considerably less accurate. So less accurate like... Um, all right, so let's say your gun is shooting... Well, actually, let me ask this. If you had it on something like this, yep. which... I don't even know if that's no, fully the in the frame. If you had it on something like this, yep. and you were going into a structure, and maybe you had a long shot in your structure that was like 50 yards, would it matter at all? Yes. Yeah. If, at, if you're talking like a human-sized target, at 50, that's going to be a far more difficult shot than without the light. Really? Yes. Interesting. I'm surprised it has, well, maybe I'm not so, surprised it has that much impact on it. So, we generally see... 15 to 25 times the group size increase. Dang. Yes. All right. So more like walking up to someone in, in the back yeah. seat of a car. Yeah, it's not a the white. Yeah, it's a much, much shorter okay. practical usage. All right. Range. What is, how long does that last before it's just um, not really The first good. shot is by far the quietest. Mm -hmm. uh, five, 10, 15 shots is generally better and as soon as you get to like 25 30 shots it's as if it's not there okay so you could like start inside a house with yeah. this and by yeah. the time it's shot out yeah and you've moved outside like yeah. burn it down it's all it degrades at an increasing rate <laughs> okay and that was totally driven by the customer for that yeah I mean even back when we were at AAC, we'd have customers asking about a wipe and a rifle silencer. Mm. Generally, the solution, at least for those customers, was a little bit of water in the silencer with duct tape over the muzzle. It works. About Pragmatic. Good, yep. It's cheap. It's easy. Um, duct tape is wildly available. Yeah. And it was very effective. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, of course... 
We're getting into eight six. I guess we should talk at least just briefly with respect to, even though it is a complete unknown, where we are on the timeline. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so our first production quantity of brass is due in early fall. Okay. Um, we have a couple. How, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm curious with that. So production run of brass, if you can say who makes it, I'm just personally oh, curious. Yeah, it's, it's all Hornady brass. Okay, and so I need to go do a video on how brass is made because I don't know, and I'm sure it's fascinating, like how that gets like formed or whatever. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense, and yeah. it goes real fast. I want to check that out sometime. Yeah. But so they're making the first production brass. Are they doing like a big lot, or yes? Yeah, so they'll run all of it at once. Okay. Yeah. So whatever thousands, millions, whatever, whatever, the whatever they make, is, they're going to do all at a once. massive production of. Eight six brass. Yeah. Okay. And then I guess what is the next step from there? Well, from there we have the biggest things are uh, barrel manufacturers being able to produce the fast twist required for this, and uh, we have a couple custom projectiles being produced. We have some off-the-shelf projectiles that we're sourcing, and then we have uh, two or three uh, companies that are going to load it for us. Okay. We haven't finished all that agreement yet, so. Uh, it's not my job to tell who that is. Yeah, and we're also at a point in time where the whole world is in flux and everything is unknown. Oh yeah, the so, ammunition supply is not something yeah, I like, want to predict. Right now, apparently, primers. Primers are, are difficult to get right now. Yeah, um, which is crazy. But yeah, it's the world we live in right now. Yeah, twenty twenty is a mess. Um, very cool. So. The big takeaway is we have no idea on the timeline of 8.6 right now. Yeah, right now it's ammunition is the, that's, the, the that's longest, the the longest right there. lead time item. And yeah. with some, how some of the component companies are going, it, it's on. And I mean, in fairness with ammunition, like 9 mil is like back ordered like oh, months and months sure. at this point, let alone introducing a brand new cartridge yeah. like to the market. So yeah, yeah it's a bummer. 2020 screwed everyone, but all right, it is coming ultimately. Oh yeah. Um, so this design is this one of the other prototype ones? Yeah, that's a direct thread 338. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's going to be the pork chop, right? As far as I know, that's the name of it. As things stand right now, it's going to be the pork chop. Because <laughs> why not? Um, and it's going to interface with something. Whether yeah, we'll have flash hiders, muzzle brakes, whether or not we do the deep yeah, feature, or not inexpensive one, maybe, okay. probably. I don't know. And when all of this comes out to, I'm imagining this is probably cost prohibitive to just manufacture for like your regular customers, i.e. like with the wipe and stuff like that. Or is this no. going to be? No, it, we just need to decide whether or not all the silencers are going to have the wipe front end cap or not. Gotcha. It's might be an option it might be an option i i don't know yeah it's it's way lighter if you go with a standard front end cap that adds yeah, this adds about that. two ounces because you don't even need all that material right there do you like no. you just nope. like it can literally just also be what like well a half inch shorter because it, now that's your end cap or? yeah and that's another thing that we still haven't finalized on is what the actual length of the silencer is going to be how many baffles exactly how many baffles it's oh. Everything's a compromise. Yeah. Length, weight, cost, sound. Is there definitely like a sweet spot, like when you get up here, where just massive diminishing returns to like put one more? Yes, and we've. So for 300 blackout with subsonic ammunition, the full Nelson, that seems to be the sweet spot for the most gain we can get from a sound perspective. That's really practical um, going like balance with weight and size yeah well and not even really that because the half Nelson is considerably smaller considerably lighter and not that much quieter um, the difference with a full Nelson going one more baffle or two baffles it, mm -hmm. 
it's so small that we have to meter it. It's not like you can hear it and say, hey, that one is better than gotcha. the other one. Gotcha. Like to your ear. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a small increase in performance that it's definitely not worth the sacrifice of cost, length. Oh, okay. Interesting. One more baffle that the bullet has to pass through. Yeah. So the longer the silencer, the bigger we have to make the bore just to guarantee that based on a certain the angular wire EDM. Al yeah, based on a yeah. certain angular alignment that we have the gap to the bullet that we prefer to have. Okay, because yeah, the shorter, I imagine on your jumbo shrimp, the bore is tolerance smaller. is like a lot. Well, the tolerance is the same. It's just the size that we have to run the bore because a it's a 6.5 silencer so mm -hmm. it's not the bore is not suitable for 30 caliber anything yeah. <laughs> don't do that um you will not get an rma number probably you'd be surprised what we give an rma number <laughs> <we're> for <laughs> um but because it's short so if you think of a cone so i have a, imagine the bore is perfectly straight and that's mm -hmm. the path of the bullet which isn't na necessarily the thing but let's just say the bore is a perfect axis. Okay. Then you have an angular deviation away from it. So it that forms a cone. So the longer you make the silencer, the bigger the the hole needs to be to encapsulate that angular deviation. Within basically a what you guys have decided is acceptable tolerance for barrel manufacturers and stuff like that. Sure. So and the other thing too is when the bullet comes out of the rifling, it's not it's not spinning in a perfect cylinder. It has an amount of wobble to it. So like 338 isn't really stable to like 100 and something meters. Dang. Like the bullet is still finding like its Like finding, finding it's true? Yeah. So, okay. the, so it's not like it's a 308 bullet and it's a 308 cylinder that's moving in a perfect line. It's not a laser gun. It is not a laser. It is a uh -huh. piece of material that is spinning real fast and it has to stabilize. So that 308 diameter bullet is effectively a 320, a 330 diameter cylinder as it's passing through the silencer. So you guys use your science and math to no. figure out the cone that's going? Well, the scientific method of empirical measurements. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of uh, guess and check at the beginning. Um, blown out in caps? Yeah, so I mean, there, I mean, there are some manufacturers like you can go through in time and look at a silencer produced in 2005, 2010, 2015, 2020, where you can... And is, is it a <laughs> graph like this with RMA numbers? <laughs> no, it, like you look at, uh, there's a couple silencer manufacturers where the bore size grew like five or 10 thou every couple of years. Hmm. Just because like, yes, you can start with a 250, 255 thou diameter hole for a 556 silencer. But the chances of you making every single silencer straight and perfect relative to the flash hider or muzzle yeah. brake relative to the gun relative to the and bullet. that in part is why you guys wire edm too because correct because what that it does a couple things it gives us the position of the bore but it also guarantees the size and form of the bore because once this is assembled i have no real good way of telling if every baffle orifice all the way through is in a line or the correct size. I mean, we inspect them. Yeah. We inspect them as individual components, but when you weld them, they the metal move. Moves, yeah, yeah, like you're melting metal to stick them together, so they will move. Um, it's not much, but when you start talking about a few thousandths of an inch here, a few thousandths of an inch here, and then you have this sacking. ten inch thing with it has some angular misalignment, all of these things start adding up. No, I remember building building my trash panda with your dad. Oh yeah. Actually. And then yeah, as we as we basically like finished welding, essentially coming down here now and seeing how much it essentially it, moved. Yeah, and it's go it's going to move. Yeah. And then wire EDM like alleviates that. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, I greatly appreciate your time. It's always and a pleasure. It is always a pleasure. I mean, for me, like, I can't speak for you, but... Well, no. that's why I said it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So it wasn't implied. Yeah. No, I really appreciate your time, and you guys continue to continue to do rad stuff, man. Like, Thanks. Cool, cool stuff. But right here, as we just went over it, 
is a indefinite look at when this stuff is coming, but a pretty cool look at some stuff that will eventually come. And the other thing I do appreciate too is you guys don't like beta test on customers, which is also cool. We try so. to we try to do as much stuff ahead of time as possible. Um, It'll I'm come. Sure you've had and, videos of the test machines and yeah, so. no, which is awesome. Like going through and testing all that stuff out. So. When it's ready, which there are a lot of factors, especially in 2020 at play on the ammunition side, but when it's ready, it'll come out and I look forward to doing some content with it when sure. it does, for sure. But as always, thanks for joining us at kbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.